Hey folks, welcome to another edition and the final edition of 2023 of the Patreon Q&A here on the Golden Bolt. If you're not familiar, it's again what it says on the tin. For as little as a dollar a month over at patreon.com slash the Golden Bolt, you get access to the Golden Bolt Discord server, as well as uh, a bunch of other perks such as early or ad-free access to videos, depending on your, your tier and all that fun stuff. Merch discounts now, which is pretty rad. Uh, a, a monthly Patreon Discord hangout is coming in 2024, as well as a Patreon Q&A thread, where you can ask me any question you want, and I will most likely answer it to the best of my ability, as long as it's not a really weird one. So far, no one's made a weird one. So we're in good shape so far. Um, hopefully your December has gone splendidly so far. Uh, mine's been pretty good, and um, I'm excited to end it with a with a bang, uh, content-wise. Uh, if anything, actually, um, there is a question here about content coming for 2024, so stay tuned in just a moment for that. But I will say, as a bit of 2023 wrap-up, and this might end up in another video as well, where I mention stuff like this, not super satisfied with how my uh, content strategy turned out in 2023. Uh, I'm satisfied with how well a lot of the videos did, but there's a lot that I left on the table that I really wanted to do, and a lot of that's related just to being busier this year than I, I usually am. Uh, you know, losing uh, a couple months there to moving and then charity while moving and then having a rare week of a uh, couple day vacation with my buddy uh, JTart9 from the Crubcast and then going back to moving immediately after that. So uh, I've talked about that a bunch, but uh, that ate a lot more of my time than I thought and then getting ready. And now I have uh, Barley, my dog, who's uh, been a wonderful little boy, but um, getting him used to the home was easy, but also tiring, obviously. He settled in really quick. I was really lucky, but uh, I also wanted to make sure he was settled in, so I spent more time with him and on him than probably would be necessary for a dog that's fairly easy like him. But uh, I have a whole list here, actually, to my left that I will uh, not read off, obviously, but it's a list of, I'm going to say, 25 to 30 things that I want to cover uh, conceptually for 2024. Obviously, I'm not going to do all of these because a lot of these are just big things. Like I mentioned Resident Evil. I'm not really a huge Resident Evil guy. Probably not going to cover it next year, but it's on the list of maybe I will. You never know. Uh, as well as other stuff uh, here, like uh, the Microsoft uh, DS games video, which I have partially done um, um, script-wise. And I just uh, sat on it because the Game Boy one sadly didn't do as well as I was hoping. It did pick up over time, but uh, there's still not just much interest in the YouTube space for legacy Microsoft content, legacy Xbox content, um, or at least within my audience. Um, but that one reached out pretty well compared to what the usual ones do uh, as far as reaching past my audience. So. I think just in general, we're not at the point yet of there being a huge demand for Xbox stuff in the uh, in the, the, the quote-unquote retro gaming space on YouTube. Uh, it's sort of like how everything was Nintendo for a long time, and then you saw Sega creep up from uh, people that were pushing back on the Nintendo, and then obviously now there's a lot of Sony and PlayStation retro-y type content like mine out there, uh, which is really good to see. But uh, we'll get there with Microsoft so I can complain about Halo one day. Um, anyway, that's a really long prelude. Uh, I'm going to jump into at least a couple of these questions and then ramble some more and then, yeah, let's have, let's have a good time here. So the one that I will hit on is, uh, from Tony Grizz first. He had asked, well, first off, he said, how was your Christmas? Uh, I don't know yet, but uh, I'm sure it went very well. Did I get what I wanted for Christmas? I got this question. So yes. And then another question, uh, I'm sure you have a video plan for updates, so you don't have to answer this, but what video plans do you have for this or next year? Consider this the video update plan for this or next year, because I don't think I'm going to do a full one on that. I may do a video, uh, I haven't decided if I'm going to do it loosely on the second channel, or uh, in detail on the main channel, where I go over everything I've played in 2023. Uh, I thought that'd be a fun thing, I ripped off Chris Mykonos fan, also of my podcast, The Grub Guest, check out Crub at youtube.com slash at Crub Official if you haven't already. Uh, I would really appreciate it if you do, uh, hit the subscribe button over there if you haven't. But uh, I'm ripping off his concept for doing that, uh, that year in review thing that he does, and uh, I haven't decided how I'm going to do it yet, but uh, I might talk about some plans for 2024 there, but I'm going to assume not, so here we are. Um, generally, for 2024, my plans are to uh, get back to being prolific, hopefully. I um, spent a lot of this year 
focusing on the big tent pole videos and not really experimenting as much as I would have liked. There's so many video ideas that I have that I just, I've been sitting on for, for months. Uh, there's one that's going to be coming out uh, hopefully at the end of this year, unless I have to delay it for whatever reason. Uh, it's not the Ratchet video. The Ratchet PSP video is coming this year. Uh, I will die if it doesn't. Um, but uh, I have a video looking into the topic of of beating video games and the percentages of people that do and don't, which I have been sitting on for so long. It's a really neat idea, but I just don't know how it would perform, and I have to juggle that stuff now, which really sucks. Um, but I, I plan on talking with uh, my, my brand guys, the guys who do my, um, my sponsor uh, handling stuff, uh, in early 2024, because I, I, I think that there's a way that we can juggle me doing the more out there smaller videos and not having it affect the uh, need or the, the number, I guess, uh, of average viewership per video, which affects the rates that you get from sponsors, the sponsors that you get, etc., etc. It's all dumb shit that I have to account for nowadays uh, just to keep the uh, figurative lights on. So, uh, very fortunate that that's a problem that I have, obviously. But, um, yeah, I really, I have a lot of smaller ones that I really, really want to hit on next year. So, uh, generally, uh, I want to get into the flow that I was kind of getting into throughout this year. And then I, I just hesitated on some smaller ones, and that usually slows down the bigger ones, and it becomes this whole thing. So, uh, one, a couple things I'll say is I was supposed to do Mario this year, and I didn't do Mario at all, like 3D Mario. Uh, mainly because the time for the one video that I want to open with on Mario 64 didn't it didn't work out like I want to do a joke video on Mario 64 before I do a real one but doing them back to back would probably send the wrong message so I, I haven't figured out how I want to do that but the joke one is a really stupid and good idea in my opinion and everyone that I've told it, the idea to has loved it so I'm probably going to do it at this point. I've realized that every time I say fuck it and just make a dumb video, uh, it just does well. You guys consume it and enjoy it and spread it around and you make it uh, a thing. And I'm really grateful for that. So I really want to hit on uh, Mario, 3D Mario next year, especially since I'm assuming that there will be a new one announced next year, if nothing else. Uh, there's still another Nintendo thing that I have avoided ever talking about until they are done. I refuse to speak those into existence until they're done. So you don't get much on that. Uh, other stuff that I'm looking at, uh, obviously new games I want to cover. I want to hit on Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. I want to hit on Like a Dragon uh, Infinite Wealth. Um, stuff like that. It depends on when I get uh, press copies, if I get press copies, uh, stuff like that that I have to deal with. Uh, and throws my whole schedule into uh, chaos sometimes because sometimes I'll get a video or I'll get a game uh, you know, weeks ahead of time, and I can plan around that. Sometimes they won't tell me when they have an idea of when things are heading out. Sometimes I'll get it the day before release, and then I'm, I either have to rush it out and uh, fight against the algorithm and uh, being behind against the IGNs of the world, or I have to not do that and just uh, watch the video not perform well, and then there's, again, the sponsor thing. Like, I, I had a sponsor argue uh, that the Spider-Man 2 review should count towards my most recent video performance when I had to explain that's a review of a new game. It's If you want to do that, then I can look at my God of War video, and that did super, super well uh, last year. So it's just hit or miss. It depends on when you get there. And uh, yeah, so I, I my hope is that I'm just going to say fuck it next year and just and just ball. Uh, we'll see if that's the case, but um, I, I I feel comfortable taking those risks, now, uh, risks nowadays. Excuse me. I lost my voice there for a single word. So... Uh, yeah, um, I, I will probably hit on a thing like an Ape Escape at some point. I have some Ape Escape preliminary work done. Uh, don't take that as a guarantee that it will happen, but uh, I want to do stuff involving Sony's Japan Studio because it is a fascinating story from what I've gathered, and I don't know how to tell that story without making people mad because a lot of the Sony Japan Studio stuff was not very good. Not Ape Escape, just the, the rest of the stuff they did was very... Uh, there's a reason that they went under multiple uh, restructures before they just had the plug pulled entirely. So I want to cover that at some point, too. Um, so more of the same, essentially. That's a really long answer, but more of the same. Uh, if you have anything you want me to cover, definitely let me know. I had that community post a couple days ago uh, that I kind of broached for ideas to see what you guys want to see me cover. 
Um, but in this video's comments as well, let me know, because I, again, I always take that into account, and I really, I really, really want to be able to provide more to the patrons, especially in terms of giving them the uh, ability to give more input on upcoming videos or the order of them. Uh, uh, this year, I got really caught up with fighting against sponsor deadlines. Uh, I shouldn't say fighting. Fighting against myself on sponsor deadlines because of everything else going on. And I just didn't... I want you guys to have more agency in that process as much as possible. Uh, yeah, so hopefully, hopefully we will... Uh, probably have a light January as I plan stuff out. I do have a sponsor for January, so there will be at least one big-ish video, uh, hopefully. Uh, but then I don't really plan on doing anything big until February. I think I have a video planned for Super Bowl Sunday, maybe, uh, to kick things into gear and then really start the year from there, hopefully. So uh, that's that question out of the way. There's a really long answer. Hopefully it, it helped you uh, get excited for the content coming next year. Uh, I'm going to jump to, I have, and what question do I want to do here? Let's do the quick one. If you could crash the stage at the Dorito Pope, AKA Jeff Game Awards and promptly get thrown out, what would you say? Um, I don't, I don't know. I might just plug the podcast, honestly. I might just plug Grub and get it out of the way because if I'm going to get banned, I might as well get my money's worth, you know? Uh... I can't think of anything funny I would say. Like, it'd be cool to be there, but there's also... I, I don't know why I would be there unless there was some weird fucking world where I had a, a, a vested interest in being there. Um, and they don't really do anything with creators nowadays. So, yeah, I don't, I don't know. Uh, I have no funny answer to this. Sorry. Um, we're going to move on to AE Double, who asks his usual uh, two questions here. We'll do the joke one first and then the real one. Uh, when do you think you'll reach the point when you can call yourself the Platinum Bolt? When I decide to trade market. Uh, probably never, because that's a that's a straight-up Ratchet & Clank thing. But uh, Golden Bolt is at least my brand. Like That's a thing I own, so I'm, I'm not worried about that. Platinum Bolt would be where maybe someone at Sony would be like, hey, man, don't do that, and uh, that's iffy. Um, there is the silver screw, though. So if you want the silver screw, I got that. Or the bronze bronzer. Uh, and then he also asks, who are some of your favorite characters in video games? Let's go for from favorite games and not necessarily favorite games. I could not think of any from not necessarily favorite games. I just thought of the first ones that came to mind. So uh, I shouted out uh, anything from Yakuza. So, so Ichiban, Kiryu, Akiyama, obviously Majima's there. Uh, just that whole cast is so uh, well-rounded and... Well, I'm maybe not well-rounded all the time because Majib is just kind of crazy, but, you know, uh, they're always so interesting and fascinating and human, I guess is the way I would phrase them. And uh, I love the big dumb game about these super Jack dudes being in their feelings. It, it makes me, it makes me, uh, makes me feel humanity. I don't, I don't know what that means. I also mentioned the Xenoblade casts. Uh, usually they are also very well-rounded, even if they're very, you know, tropey at times. Uh, I've really really liked how Xenoblade 3's cast was coming together I haven't finished it yet I gotta get back to it um but I, I really enjoyed the concept behind Xenoblade 3 uh, a ton and that cast was was working some magic by I think I'm like 70% through the game so most of the game for most of the game uh then I will also move right over to uh, Thomas Kuzma, who has two questions. Uh, one is kind of related to what AEW just asked. Uh, I was just watching Puss in Boots and couldn't help but he uh, love Jack Horner and his personality. What video game villains do you love based on their personality? So I wrote a few. Uh, the first two that came to mind were Nanako from Persona 4, because she's the true villain. Not, not really. Uh, Rafe Adler from Uncharted 4, because I really love that he just shows up and he's like, I'm the villain. And that's his entire character arc. That's pretty cool. And then for real ones, uh, there's obviously the classics, like any of the rare villains. So Gruntilda or, or K. Rule, you know, just they have so much personality to them. Uh, or the one that stuck out to me when I was looking through my games list, trying to find a good example of one that you can't help but like the the opposing factions in fire emblem three houses really stuck out to me because they're not none of them are really truly villains uh and i always find that stuff compelling i always find it really uh neat to explore uh that multi-faction angle uh, it always it always vibes with me well 
Uh, and then his first question was top five games of the year. I'm not going to give you top five because I'm always bad at ranking and I change them every time I think about them. But I will say games that I'll shout out. Hi-Fi Rush is the best Xbox game in the last decade, just about. Uh, that game's rad. Uh, Lies of P is really, really good. I did not expect to get so engrossed in that game. That game is uh, also really rad. And I'm glad it's getting the reception that it is. Uh, I think that game's going to be a very cult classic-y game for years to come. And uh, I'm glad about that because it is... I'll talk about that more now, actually. It is the most human Souls game I think I've ever played. I really like how it approaches the concept of doing uh, a Souls-styled gameplay uh, focus, you know, that, that sort of exploration, and obviously the gameplay itself, the combat, the, the being hard part, and being uh, pattern-focused, uh, constantly dancing against the enemies type beat. But the thing that uh, really stuck out to me was the way that it told the story in a an easy to digest way that still has that element of you can dig into it like a souls game and try and uh lore analyze and whatnot i think the way that it put together a hybrid of story and souls vagueness souls world building uh was really unique for the genre so far and i would really really like to see games that tackle that uh style in the future because it, there's something to be said about how Souls games handle themselves, obviously. There's something to be said about uh, that organic discovery, uh, you know, that, that old classic Zelda 1 styled, uh, figure it out yourself, uh, you know, schoolyard, oh, I learned this, you should look over here, stuff. And, and I really respect that. And, uh, you know, playing Elden Ring was one of those experiences where I couldn't help but get sucked into it like everybody else did obviously i didn't end up finishing elden ring but uh for the time i put into it i was into it but in the same breath i like there being an accessible alternative that gives you that gameplay kick and also wants to tell you a story on its terms or or rather it makes you it doesn't make you engage on its terms it's willing to uh engage in the usual video game storytelling terms and I, I don't know it just it just really clicked with me and I would like to see more games do that it's not necessarily the right way to do Souls games obviously there is no right way to do Souls games uh, but I, I want more of that I really want more of how they did it because it was really really good uh, so I'll shout out that game. I said Hi-Fi Rush. Uh, Spider-Man 2 is rad. Tears of the Kingdom is one of the best games ever made. I haven't played Baldur's Gate 3. That's probably also one of the best games ever made. Uh, shoot, what else have I played? What else have I played? A lot. I just can't remember them right now. Uh, Resident Evil 4 was okay. I, I didn't get super far in it, but uh, I, I picked it up over the November week where I took a week off and just played video games. And I enjoyed it. Uh... I don't know, I, there's something about Resident Evil style that just never clicks with me super hard, so can't speak too much to that. Uh, oh, uh, Like a Dragon Gaiden was very good uh, for being a really weird game. Uh, don't play that if you haven't played Yakuza before. They said it was an accessible game for newcomers. It is not. Uh, but it's very fun, and I enjoyed having more of that and uh, getting ready for the final wrap-up of, of the Kiryu saga of games. And, uh, yeah, it's more than five games, but that's a bunch. Uh, I will probably, I don't know when, but I'll have a video on either channel at some point, uh, where I go into every game I've played. Oh, Cassette Beasts, also a rad game. Play Cassette Beasts. I like the game a lot. It's like Pokemon, but, uh, better. So, play that. And then, uh, the final question, I think I'm looking through, I did all of them. Yeah, the final question we're going to hit on today is from HCSP1, who, uh, said, with the return of licensed games recently, so Spongebob the Cosmic Shake, the new Avatar game, <laughs> the, uh, upcoming TMNT, the last Ronin game, etc., is there a license that you'd be interested in seeing make the jump into the game world or get another game after years of not seeing one? The first thing that came to mind besides Avatar getting a good game, because that's obviously on my mind with that recent Avatar video, is Alien Isolation 2. I know there are Alien games that come out, or rather Aliens games, I guess. I know that those exist. I really want a good Alien Isolation 2 that's not just a weird mobile game. Uh, that game, for my money, is the best horror game ever made. 
uh, because they were essentially daring themselves to make a game that was long and scary the whole way and keeping you tense and on your toes and that one went way too long while doing it so I'd love to see them take that and polish it and also the ability to have a pseudo uh, not true AI but the AI of the alien was unique in that it, it pretended to learn the idea of having one that pretends to learn even better on, on better hardware uh, I would kill for that that would be so good and I would be shitting my pants constantly and I would love that so that is just about everything. Like I said, I have other stuff in store for the rest of this year, at least the Ratchet PSP video on the main channel, uh, at least something covering all the games I played in, on one of the channels. Uh, I haven't decided yet, again, which one I'm going to do uh, because I haven't decided if I'm going to start in fuck it mode and just say, here's a 40 minute video of me rambling or if I'm going to script it and put it on the main channel or how I'm going to do that one yet, I haven't figured it out. So that's going to come soon. I have hopefully one more smaller one coming along with Ratchet this year. Uh, it just depends on if it makes sense to uh, finish that up before Ratchet uh, this week or rush Ratchet. Not, I shouldn't say rush, but uh, push Ratchet out before Christmas because I really wanted to get something out for Christmas that was at least for patrons uh, big uh, and Ratchet might well be that depending on how I handle the rest of my day today and tomorrow um, we will see but uh, yeah that's just about everything uh, there will be another Ratchety thing coming in February probably but it's going to be probably just a compilation of the PS2 games plus the that I'll, I'll, I'll give away the goat on this one. Uh, the Ratchet PSP video is going to cover the PSP games specifically. I, I do not intend to talk about the PS2 versions of those games yet. Uh, mainly because I would like to punt that away and hopefully be able to get some developer info on the ports and what went wrong and right with those because I haven't had any luck with the PSP games and I'd like to at least get something... Uh, and also, I, I don't want to play those games two more times each yet. I, I, I just I just don't. I really, really don't. I, I promised that Ratchet PSP video in June, I want to say. Uh, because I thought I wouldn't hit 100,000 subscribers until August. And then the week after I did that, the Wii uh, video came out and the Wii video blew up. And I hit 100,000 subscribers that week. So... I had hit the goal six to eight weeks before I thought I would, and so I was behind the ball on playing the Ratchet PSP games. I had already started them ahead of announcing that, because the plan was always to do it around then. And then I was behind the ball, the move happened, a bunch of other stuff uh, that just got in the way, and every time I sat down to get back into the PSP stuff, uh, just to play like the, the remaining B-roll, the New Game Plus stuff for uh, Size Matter, Secret and Clank, I just... It sucked the life out of me. It was it was rough. And that, along with continuing to wait and hopefully get responses on production stuff, and I just, I just again, didn't have any luck, uh, that one has just eaten my soul passively in the background for essentially the last three months, if not longer. And I want to release the PSP video this year not think about them for a month and then come back to them and hopefully be able to give some more info on the PS2 ports uh, so that I can put together that PS2 Ratchet compilation and give something of substance back to uh, justify making that. Because it'll mostly be the same videos just combined because those have now reached their, uh, their, their end of life in terms of viewership. And uh, I figure it's not a bad idea for those of you that are hashtag gamers that maybe don't watch sports to give you a big thing to watch that day. Even if it's old content, I know a lot of you guys come back to it uh, again and again. So giving you one place to do it all at once means that you can hopefully suffer through less ads in the process because it's only on one video. And uh, it worked well for the Sly video. And I really liked being able to put together extra texture in between each game for the Sly uh, mega retrospective on top of just giving you my old videos. And I want to do that again and correct some things on the PS2 games. Uh, like, for example, I called the weapons designer 
Roberto Rodriguez. I called him the the WWE announcer Ricardo Rodriguez, and it's only in the voiceover. It's not in the script. I, I just didn't catch it because for some reason my brain went to wrestling for that exact read, and I never caught it, and I want to fix that, uh, get that right, obviously. Uh, there's probably some element where there will be things that are maybe worth discussing in the in the scope or in the uh, in light of a lot of the financial info that came out related to the very unfortunate uh, insomniac hack. I uh, don't intend to talk about that on its own, uh, just because I, I don't know uh, the 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 leaky things for new games. I don't think are really worth discussing. Uh, I like. The idea of keeping as many people surprised as possible on that stuff it's not really fair to the developers uh in any sense usually with any leaks um and so or at least with any leaks that are done uh via fully illicit means and not just from oh someone forgot that they uploaded it to their portfolio oops there's concept art uh but there's a lot of interesting numbers that came out of it and most of it just proved that my research was right and i feel really good about that so there might be stuff related to that with the ps2 games uh, I just haven't figured out yet that because I'm going to tackle that project in January, but six hour Ratchet and Clank PS2 video coming with new content, uh, in February as well, featuring the PS2 ports of the PSP games, because boy, help me. I will need to play those games at least one more time each. And I, I don't want to, I, I really, I really don't want to, it's, I, I'm not even hamming it up, those games, I was more hopeful than maybe I should have been, that maybe my old memories were hopefully going to skew more positive, or rather that they would stay as positive to neutral, especially about Secret Agent Clank, because I liked that game when I had first played it, and no, no, they, every, every mission got worse, everything got worse, that whole game got worse every time I played it again, so... Uh, gonna have to be super negative man about those games and that's not gonna be fun but I don't have any development info to give you outside of some uh, assumptions so look forward to me being uh, sad that's a good way to end the year right just being, just being sad yeah alright I'm gonna end the video here Thank you for watching. Subscribe to this channel if you're not already on the second channel here on the Golden Bolt 2. If you're for some reason subscribed to the second channel but not the main channel, subscribe there. My podcast, Crub, go to uh, youtube.com slash at Crub Official. Subscribe there. I'm on there close to every week at this point. Uh, and it's always fun talking in this sort of less scripted, less restricted manner. Uh, so I would uh, appreciate it if you check that out as well. Hopefully, if I don't say uh, Happy New Year to you in any other form up until the new year, you have a Happy New Year, you enjoy the rest of your December, or don't. It's your call. It's the way you make it. Bye.